Myanmar was in the middle of a nationwide census. Its first one in 30 years. Suddenly, the advanced technology backbone of the entire census completely failed. Any guesses, this technology? Pencils. The country had run out of pencils. An emergency international procurement of 170,000 pencils was made. An entire workforce was hired just that so they could sharpen pencils fast enough so that the census could be completed on time. And when the data from the census finally came in, the country was in for a big shock. Myanmar had previously thought its population was 60 million people. When the data came in, turned out that there were only 51 million people in Myanmar. The government had been planning every budget, every intervention for 9 million people, 15% of its population that just did not exist. Sounds like a story from the early 1900s, right? After all, today we live in the world of unprecedented big data, the world of Facebook, Twitter, Google. This was the year 2014. 2014, the same year that Germany used big data to win the FIFA World Cup. It's crazy how big data is used today to solve some kinds of problems and not others. As a college student in Singapore, I interned in Goldman Sachs, where I saw how real-time data was used every second to make both important and not so important decisions in the finance world. But what about other worlds? Worlds like healthcare, education, environment, crime. Data just isn't used in the same way. And so, my co-founder Varun and I founded Social Cops to empower our world leaders with the information that they need in real time to make some of the most complex decisions facing our world. We moved to India after we graduated and spent an entire year doing pilots to try and understand why it was so easy to use data in football, but not in decisions that mattered. We found that the single biggest bottleneck was the data itself. In most places in the developing world, data is still recorded on registers like these. Most of this data will never make it to a digital format. Even if this data does make it to a digital format, it's often stored like this. Unstructured, local language, impossible to extract. And even if the data somehow does make it to a consumable format, it's often stored in siloed, disconnected systems that just never talk to each other. For example, the district of Nagpur alone in Maharashtra has 32 different health data systems. And just when you think that it can't get worse, it does. The first time that we matched two data sets at a village level in India. Imagine this, table with village names, table with village names. Join the two tables. Sounds really simple, right? We got a 15% match. Why? Because in a country like India, one data set would call Mumbai, Mumbai, the other Bombay. One data set would spell Pompurna with a B, the other Pompurna with a P. Matching these data sets together was a complete nightmare. It was as a search to a solution to some of these problems that our data intelligence platform at Social Cops was born. We believe that if we could somehow bring together all of these data sets and showcase it to decision makers in an easy, intuitive fashion, it would help them make more accurate data-driven decisions. Now, while as an organization, our focus is to empower leaders and decision makers, behind each of these decisions, each of these data points are people, people whom we may some, sometimes never know. People like Sunita. Sunita is a 35-year-old woman, mother of two, cooks for her children morning and night. Her equipment, this. This is a chulha, traditional firewood that's used in many parts of rural India. Cooking on a chulha is equal to smoking 400 cigarettes an hour. But the only alternative for Sunita is to leave her remote tribal village, walk 20 kilometers to the nearest LPG gas center, pick up a 14-kilo gas cylinder, put it on her head, and walk back to her home. 
It was in order to ensure that Sunita and millions of women like her get easy access to clean cooking fuel that the Ministry of Petroleum and the three oil companies in India decided to open the next 10,000 LPG centers. To identify where these LPG centers should be opened, they partnered with us. Now, we had to consider several things. On one side, these LPG centers were operated by small entrepreneurs, and so they needed to be profitable and sustainable. On the other hand, we needed to ensure that every one of the 1.2 billion people living in India get access to an LPG center within 10 kilometers of their homes. Now, usually this decision would take over two years, involve thousands of field officers, and hand-drawn maps like these. We wanted to transform the way this decision was made through our data intelligence platform. We started to, by bringing together the data that we already had. We partnered with the oil companies and pulled together data from scattered internal data systems about sales and profitability and supply demand and number of consumers. But typical market data would only care about profitability. It would never put an LPG center near Sunita's home. And so, we mapped every one of India's 640,000 villages. Every dot on the screen is a village in India. We brought it together with 600 external data sources about population, affluence, infrastructure, LPG penetration. And just when we thought that we had all the data we needed, we realized we didn't. We didn't actually know the exact locations of the existing LPG centers. And so within a month, 17,000 distributors across India downloaded our Android app, submitted their location coordinates, and mapped every LPG center in the country. And with that, we finally had all the data that we needed. But it wasn't enough. Now we actually had to make these data sets talk to each other. This is where the intelligence of our platform kicked in, so it knows that Bombay changed its name to Mumbai in 1995, and Pompurna is often spelt as, you know, Pompurna by many people. Using all these intelligent algorithms, we were finally able to bring all of this data together and make it talk to each other. And now the last step. Where do we actually open the LPG centers? I'm zooming into the district Sundargarh, one of 640 in India, the one that Sunita lives in. These are all the LPG distribution centers in the district. These are all the villages in Sundargarh. Now, some of these villages already have access to LPG centers. These are the ones that we need to provide access to. Now, where is the ideal LPG center? Ideally, a place that is centrally accessible, a marketplace that Sunita already travels to. Um, it should have maybe a bank or an ATM, good electricity, good infrastructure, a good road so that the truck could easily go in and out. It was all of these factors that our algorithm used to compute volumes of data and pinpoint the exact final locations to open LPG centers. And that's how. A center was commissioned in the village, Gurundia, just four kilometers away from Sunita's house. This is a picture of Sunita when she got LPG in her house for the first time. She doesn't need to use a chula anymore. For the past three years at Social Corps, we've had a chance to leverage our data intelligence platform and transform the way organizations make decisions, from annual strategic plans to real-time course corrections. Today, a union minister is using our platform to track a national program every day, every morning on his tablet. An FMCG company is prioritizing 2,000 locations out of 200,000 to run an ice cream campaign. A philanthropic foundation is targeting an $8 million investment in agriculture. And district collectors across India, supported by the Tata Trust, are targeting government benefits to citizens who need them the most. Imagine a world, a world where we can capture criminals at the scene of crime, not years later. A world where we could predict if a child is going to drop out of school before even she knows it. A world where we can reroute cars in real time to prevent the traffic congestion that we all hate so much. 
a world where we can eradicate a disease as it breaks out, not thousands of deaths later. A world where data is not just used to incorrectly predict the next president, <laughs> but where we use data to truly improve the lives of billions of people. Thank you.